The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord to you, Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas, everyone. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? You knew that was coming. About 5,000 years ago, so we're literally talking during the Stone Age, 5,000 years ago, ancient people in what is now known as Ireland built an underground chamber which is illuminated by a ray of sunlight for only about 17 minutes, precisely at sunrise, every year like clockwork, on December 21st, the winter solstice. And it's still accurate to this day, 5,000 years later. It's an amazing accomplishment, especially when you consider that they had none of the technological advantages that we have today for such things. But for thousands of years, long before telescopes, much less before computers and satellites, our ancestors studied the movement of the sun and the moon and the stars and the planets with astounding accuracy, trying to better understand their place, our place, in the universe. And of course, still today, wise men and women are searching the heavens for greater understanding of the mysteries of life in our universe and asking those big questions. How did it all happen? When and where did it all begin? Where are we all going? What does the future hold for us and for our planet? Our gospel today tells us the familiar story of the three wise men from the east who noticed the light of a brand new star, one they've never seen before. And they tried to discover the meaning and purpose of that star, of that extraordinary event. Now our modern reliance, sometimes obsession, with scientific explanations for everything, probably would have stopped searching for meaning after explaining the birth of this new star is, well, just part of the ongoing expansion of the universe ever since the Big Bang. But the wise men of the gospel see an even deeper meaning in that new star. They see a sign that the God who would be king, who would suffer and die for all humanity, has finally been born, had finally come into human history. Now, those magi were not alone at the time in their search. We know that for centuries, the prophets and the wise men of Israel had been looking for signs of hope. They'd even given the people promises of salvation from God himself, promises that a Messiah would indeed be born someday. So in our first reading, for instance, this morning, 
we heard the hopes of the prophet Isaiah, who sees the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel for all the exiled Jewish people. He tells them that the day is coming when Jerusalem itself, the city of Jerusalem, would be a beacon of light, he says, to welcome all of the exiles home. And not only that, Isaiah says, but their nation, their city, would become a focus of unity for all the nations of the world. The passage that we heard then from Matthew's Gospel sees the birth of Jesus as the fulfillment of that prophecy from Isaiah. And the three wise men, well, they represent all the pagan nations of the world, revealing again that Jesus is the newborn king, not just for the Jews, not just for the Israelites, but for all of God's children, for every one of us, for all the people of the world. In other words, what Isaiah had foreseen for the city of Jerusalem in terms of uniting all the nations is actually fulfilled in Jesus instead, in our Lord. You know, we've all seen on Christmas cards or at least heard the phrase this time of year, wise men still seek him, right? Wise men still seek him. But it's a reminder to us that it's become a little too easy in our modern world to reduce the message and the mystery and the awe and the beauty of Christmas to simply being a cute and cozy story for children. You know, we think that, well, Christmas is really mostly for the kids. It's all about the kids. But that couldn't be further from the truth. That could not be further from the truth. Just like the wise men and women from old, our job is to keep searching for meaning in our world and in our own lives, of course. Yes, it's true that scientists and astronomers are able to keep stretching the boundaries of human knowledge when it comes to time and space and those sorts of things. But most of us are still looking for answers to those quote-unquote big questions. And one of the biggest questions of all is this. In the darkness of our world, with all its wars and all its violence and poverty and sinfulness and oppression, is there a light that can give us hope that we can indeed be saved? In the darkness of our world, is there a light that can give us hope that we can indeed be saved, that we in our world can be redeemed? Or are we doomed, in a sense, to carry on blindly exploiting our planet and exploiting one another until we finally extinguish all life from our planet. Is that our fate? Is that going to be our fate? Well, even the people of ancient times, like those folks who constructed that chamber in Ireland 5,000 years ago, even they recognized the value and the meaning of all the order and stability that they saw in the world, where the sun rose and set in predictable fashion, day after day after day. The order and the structure of the cosmos, in other words, told them that life itself was not some random, haphazard accident. In other words, if the stars could be organized so precisely, well then so could and should be human life. And so civilizations developed and grew all because the wisest people of old recognized from the order of the universe that a power far greater than human limitations had to be behind the creation of all of it. For us as believers, of course, Jesus Christ is that light we're talking about. He is the light in our world of darkness. By his life, death, and resurrection, and through his Holy Spirit, and now through the scriptures, and through the sacraments, and the teaching of the church, he illuminates the way for us. He shows us a way into a new world, into the kingdom of God. And he promises us that there, in God's kingdom, we will finally know the fullness of life. While our brief life here is just a foretaste, it's just an appetizer, as it will, of that life to come. The prayerful attention of the wise people of history has helped us to discover the unfolding mystery of God's purpose for each and every one of us. It's a mystery that has created you and I and all of God's children, created us through love, in love, for love, and to love, to love God and to love every human being and to love this planet we live on. And if we're truly wise, if we are truly wise, we'll sit up and take notice of that purpose and that meaning.